research scientist, very well in research scientist. In fact, earlier on, he was only making composite material. So why don't you call him that in his 20s, he was making composite materials. What does he know about? He made composite materials, so he made uh, missiles, he made a space going rocket, so he made missiles. Then he became chief of defense research, it encompass everything, including airplanes and biology and everything. <coughs> then he became the principal science advisor to the government of India. Is he not qualified to speak on it? Why should we choose to raise a titter? And why should we titter? So this is the first question I want to ask. What we do, uh, we, we, we must, uh, ask others to do like what we want, how we want to be treated about this. The second question I want to ask is, you made a very, very uh, forceful point that the mainstream media simply behave differently from the social media as well. It's quite obvious, I think, you know, to so But I would also like to know, do you have an explanation for it? Why? That they are in fraud is the same as saying that they are publishing. But what's the reason? Because they are not the mainstream media of the 1970s. Because the mainstream media of the 70s were Dhoor Darshan and uh, uh, Akashwani. But being state-owned, they cannot be called mainstream media. But that's not the condition today. Today, your print media and electronic media are very diversely held. It's privately held and held by a variety of interests, business, uh, various people. If all of them are chorusing and saying the same thing. Now, Mr. Chandra, you proposed, you, uh, you put a model, tab tabular column. 37 on one side, 4 on the other side. So, we have 37 idiots, 4 uh, white kids. Uh, white, they also wrote. There is some weighted attached to 37, it's a big number. So, it is very easy to, for instance, you cited that there are some cancer cases around Tampa. Where is this report coming from? Because the latest output from the Tamil Nadu government is from Dr. Shanta. Dr. Shanta happens to be the most well known oncologist and health cancer institute is considered the place. Now, she has put out a report. Maybe at the instance of Tamil Nadu government, I'm not denying that. Maybe the Tamil Nadu government went to Dr. Shanta and said, will you please look into it? But would we question her integrity? She said there is absolutely no evidence to say that the Kalparkam or even the Sengalpur district as a whole has any higher incidence of cancer compared to this. But you put one like this from some source, but you did cite the source. Maybe it's true. I think it's a DAE. DAE. Who would the Department of Atomic Energy actually do this? Please, please give me the full report. I would like to read it because it is contrary to my understanding of this subject. Now, I'm saying all this because I also had an occasion to work at a, for three years at a location about 25 kilometers from Kalpak. And one of my closest colleagues who was working with me was a guy who was worked in Kalpakum for 40 years. So, as the Kodumkulam and the Kalpakum issues and the Kodumkulam issues got fired, and we had lots of discussions. I do think that some of these, you know, facts as coming from the legislator, other side, must also be cross-checked. I am not an admirer of government facts. To me, uh, the sort of contradiction comes. <coughs> government is not, is not always fact. I agree with that. And facts have been extracted like a dentist, uh, you know, pulling out teeth. <coughs> There's no question. But uh, just simply because you can raise a, you know, a little bit of an excitement or a titter, does not make it a fact issue. So let me ask him to respond. Will you take the question, sir? And we get the point about Dr. Kalyam being referred to or being dismissed as a missile scientist is unfair. That's true. And I didn't refer to him as a missile scientist. My concern there was that he was there only for 20 minutes. This is what people, that's what even the newspapers report, that he made a 20 minute list. Uh, I just want to take issue on the, um, the Kalpakum cancer studies. 
So Dr. Sharda is an oncologist, is not a epidemiologist. There has been a response to her paper, and her paper came before the Department of Atomic Energy released data from their own sponsored study. The study was done by Aspire, and the study was done between February of 2011 and September of 2011. In a press conference, the Department of Atomic Energy released the data, saying that, see, there is no difference. They had not, whereas the actual report that Dr. Sh uh, um, the Aspire team had given, internally said that well, there is higher incidence. They released the data, and independent scientists, others, analyzed the same raw data. The raw data is available online, right? Analyzed it and found in the seven times higher incidence of cancer, and that paper is available, right? So would the Department of Atomic Energy themselves probably say that there is seven times higher incidence of cancer? No, that's not what they did. But they released the raw data from their own study. That's how that... Uh, it's not came. their own study. Yeah. It was, it was funded by... by a foundation right. whom they had funded. That's so they have given some funds. No, funded for particular reasons. I'm saying it's the DAE data. Okay. I'm very sorry to ask. Thank you. You will have to right, make a clear distinction. Right. The Department of Atomic Energy funds enormous amount of research. Right. One of them went to an NGO, right. and that NGO put out one kind of data. The Department of DAE distanced itself from it. I'm sorry, it's a bit of it. Now, that is a fact which I would have liked you to bring out in this presentation, where you're actually molding the. Right. Working style, thoughts of a lot of young uh, people. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll the data to DAE. DAE released the data. Aspire did not. The DAE released the data in a press conference. That data was analyzed by other scientists, and paper was published. Is it a DAE study? I use it in the sense that it was funded by DAE and it was released by DAE in a press conference. Uh, since then, after the the analysis came out after that, three months later, the DA distanced itself from the data. That's that, it. Would that have been a good annotation in your, uh, in your table? I think so, the yes. The DA distanced itself, then Dr. Shanta's report said. No, Dr. Report Shanta's report is earlier, and that is probably more yes. Let me just, uh, I just, just want to make a quick point here. If you, if you see the discourse that happened just now between Roshan and Mr. Uh, Narayan. Uh, this was also alluded to earlier. This is the kind of discourse that should have happened on the media, on the study itself. That didn't happen. The fact that the study was done wasn't reported. The fact that questions might be raised about who funded it and why they funded it might be raised. How the study was actually released in the press conference by the DA would have been discussed. None of that happened. That is the problem that is being raised here also. And intelligent people who have a background ask these kinds of questions and that's what happens here. This is an example of a media discourse that works. Uh, just Can I just Sure. You know, you asked about this issue of why the media is in fraud. I'll tell you, my own analysis is that until <coughs> 75, mainstream media um, did not question, for instance, India's foreign policy. The study in the mainstream media, there was very little questioning of the government's foreign policy. So very little debate with the media. And in 75, when George Burgess was editor of Times, he wrote a critical piece about Sikhism and the annexation of Sikhism, for which he was sacked, clearly on orders from the government to the Bindas, which was the owners of Hindustan Times. And I think the emergency broke that, that sort of fact. And therefore, now, post 75, post 77, you find there's much more questioning on foreign policy. And that kind of thing about the pre the post independence period broke. But I think the same thing has not happened with scientific establishment. I think when I say in fraud, I think there is an acceptance that the government scientific establishment is doing the best it can for the country. And I'm not saying it's not doing the best it can, but all I'm saying is it should be open to questioning. So why are we as journalists not questioning? And I think it is really because there is amongst our editors, amongst people at the top in the media, even if they're independent media now, there's more of it. As far as scientific establishment is concerned, the DRTO, the DAE, the DARC in Bombay, there is no effort to really stand big or other, you know, question or cross question or, or raise a debate on anything to do with them. We'll do it about the pharmaceutical industry, we'll do it about the other industries. We might even do it about thermal power stations, even if they're publicly, public sector ones, you know, and their pollution. But somehow on this particular thing, it's 
stop there. I think that pandemic has not been broken. And I think that is the reason we really do not see an engaged debate uh, with both sides. Essential issue is there is a problem, there is a difference between what's called power and what's called energy. Now, as every you know, the school physics has a book has taught you, energy is the actual amount of work done. I mean, the amount of light thrown or the light sound they created or whatever, and the power is the capacity to do that work. Now, the real issue is does the India actually lack power or energy? That is, do we have you put up enough plants which can, if they all work properly, can generate enough energy? To, the answer is substantially yes. But are they producing enough energy? The answer is substantially no. There is a huge difference between the energy which is being delivered and the energy capacity which actually has been built. That is a capital expense. With a <coughs> thousand megawatt plant, now that thousand megawatt if it operates for 24 hours a day and uh, 365 days uh, in a year, it will generate so many megawatt hours. And that megawatt hour is the energy which is uh, doing that. If you have a plant but you don't feed uranium into it, it will not produce energy. So uranium is raw material. If you don't produce it, suppose you have a strike, that energy based, the power capacity exists but there is no energy. So now actually a great deal of our problem is even with our existing plants, whatever, thermal, hydroelectric, nuclear, we have added enough capacity, but it's not producing power. Specifically with respect to the nuclear power, I would like the young journalists to actually to investigate how much capacity do we have, how much we are actually producing. And you may find, and I suspect you will find, that the main bottleneck is that there is not enough 
uranium. They're not enough fuel. Now you please investigate as to where is this, why is this fuel not there. It will take you 